Author and evangelist John Ramirez travels the globe teaching people how to defeat the enemy, an adversary John knows intimately. As a young boy, John was raised in spiritual darkness. My father's side came from a family of witches and warlocks. I was being taught and trained with high-ranked devil worshipers. But after an experience with Jesus, John gave his life to Christ. In his latest book, Armed and Dangerous, John shares his insight, giving Christians practical strategies to disarm the work of the enemy. Well, John joins us now. I'm, I've got to ask the question because, you know, you, you read the end of the Bible, you know the enemy gets defeated. Big time. Uh, so why would anyone uh, serve him? What, what, what's, what was the appeal? I think, I think the appeal uh, of serving the enemy, the enemy always shows you what's in front, but never the back door. So I think that a lot of people in the world are lacking. Uh, they want to know what the future is. They do tire cars. They want to know uh, how to get ahead. So they want a shortcut. So there's a lot of opportunities when you're desperate and you want something, you don't know the consequences that lay ahead later on. So my family had a devil worshiping for the years that I was in 25 year devil worshiping. It was always, we want the breakthrough. We want the, the success. We want even today in the music world, business, movies, why not? People get involved with this thing, but they, they want the now, but they don't know the after. What's, well, tell us the after. What's the after? Well, the after, the devil always, it's like going, it's like when people go to Vegas, right? They think they're going to hit the jackpot or something, right? Because there's something in their mind they're hoping for. They're but go they're home they're, without yeah, any money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they, the house never lose. All right. The devil never lose when you make a deal with the devil. The, when you make a contract, a covenant with the devil, he never going to lose. Because the devil knows what to give you temporary, but he knows that what he wants from you is eternal. So how, how did you break out of it? What, what was your breakthrough? My, my, you know, it, it's, it's amazing because I never signed up for Christianity. I never filled out an application. I want to be a Christian. I can't <laughs> wait. You know, I was, I, was, I was in drench in devil worship. And from the age of 8 to the age of 25, 25 years of devil worship, 35, I'm sorry, 25 years of devil worship. You, you say that, and I, I bet a lot of people don't know, what does that mean? Well, going to demon church. Uh, getting getting familiar with the, with the principalities, the territorial demons, uh, making contracts with the devil, learning demonic spiritual warfare, learning uh, the strategies uh, and the patterns and cycles of the devil. I understand, and being a medium, being doing witchcraft for hire, putting witchcraft on people, uh, making contact with different demons, territorial demons, astral projecting. Uh, blood rituals and so on and so on. Because uh, blood rituals, you're talking rituals, yes. sacrificing an, an, yes, animals. Sacrifice animals, blood ritual, you cut yourself, drink your own blood, all that stuff is going on. It's like, it's, it's like join, uh, if you join uh, a gang or you join the mafia, you know, you, you're the errand boy and you want to just move, you're so excited to move up the ranks, but when you get up there, you're like, wow, what did I do? So, same thing with the, anim with the, with the enemy. And that's what happened to me for 25 years. It went by eight, eight years old, age of 35. I got married in Halloween. I had a demonic wedding, you know, and all this happened all in within the 25 years, and I went to hell. And October night, I was preparing, October's witchcraft month for the devil in his kingdom. I was preparing for witchcraft, and God, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ had mercy on me, took me to hell, and brought me back. I went to hell as a devil worshiper, came back as a believer. That's a... a lot of, <laughs> How did that happen? Was that, are you talking a spiritual experience? No, no, I, no it, it, uh, I remember I went to, I went, I, I got invited by a, a young girl. She was a young girl I was dating at the time. Uh, she didn't, she didn't know I was a devil worshiper. She invited me to church. I got demon possessed in church, grabbed the pastor by the throat, lift him up. I was choking him. He was turning blue in his face. People ran, dropped, people took me off his hand. People snapped my hands off and 15 people jumped all over me, took me off him. I went, I remember I was home. Uh, uh, first, I was watching this, uh, one of these circular shows one morning, and uh, I heard the voice of God for the first time. He said, son, I'm coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? And I couldn't believe it because I knew the voice of the devil, the demons. I sit with the devil all night long. I went to demon church from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. All this stuff was going on. I never heard his voice before. And it was the voice of Jesus Christ. And then two weeks later, I'm sitting in my bed on October night, feeling depressed and oppressed for the first time ever in my life. And I, I said, I'm not going to serve Jesus. I'm not serving you. Your church is weak. I don't, I don't, I got a daddy that has power. But I was falling into this anesthesia sleep. And as I was falling into this anesthesia sleep, all that came out of my mouth, and it wasn't something I thought, it just came out. If you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me tonight and leave me alone forever. And I went into this anesthesia sleep, ended up in this train going to hellbound. 
This train was going so fast. I never seen, there was no speed on the earth to describe the speed on this train. And the train was full of people, but you couldn't see the faces of the people. The face was blank. And then Jezebel was on the train uh, in demonic tongue saying, traitor, traitor. And when the train hit hell, that I stepped out of hell, the first thing I said, I, I, don't, I don't belong here. And then when I step into hell, the ground breathes. The ground is alive. It breathes when you step on it. And I started to run to the portals of hell to try to find a way out of hell. And, uh, but, uh, and it's amazing because when you get to hell, uh, the fear is, is, is alive. It, it, it covers you like, like you wear a robe, you know? It comes on you, and you feel this fear that's not on the earth. And I'm trying to run to the portals of hell, and I'm trying to hear wailing, and I hear these noises, and I, 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 this heat comes over you, and I'm trying to run. Then the devil showed up in hell and said, I'm going to destroy you because I, for, I loved you like a son. I loved you. I gave you all this power. I gave you all this money. I gave you all this stuff. That's what the devil saying to me. The devil can never love you. You made an image of God. He can never love you. Let's just set the record straight. They're just, I'm lying. The devil can't tell the truth anyway. So when the devil went to grab me to destroy me in hell, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. I had shorts, I had a t-shirt, running to the portal of hell. How could a cross, a three-foot cross appear in hell? Hit the devil, I mean, knocked him out like he was a toddler. I mean, just completely knocked him out. And then I, I kept running to the portals of hell, trying to find a window door to get out. I can't stay here. The devil showed up again. I showed them, I got these marks on my chest that I cut, that was cutting to the day when I sold my soul to the devil. I said, I got these marks, this is destroy. He said, that's my contract. When he went to grab me again, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared again and hit him. Between him and I was the cross. He went to grab the cross, hit him. He, I mean, he fell out. My spirit went back into my body. Like if I was in the ICU with electrical paddles, it just jerked into my body. And I knew that God, the Lord Jesus Christ was giving me a chance to repent. And I repented that night, 1999. I, threw 100, I had $100,000 witchcraft stuff in my house. I had human bones. I had this uh, thing called cardones with all kinds of uh, ingredients of witchcraft. I threw all that away. And I do a daddy that I could see to follow a daddy that I couldn't see. I think in American culture today, we play, a, we play around with the demonic as if it's, it's not real. We even have our children parade through the streets in Halloween. What would you say to parents who are letting their kids do that? Well, I, I think that's spiritual, not only spiritual suicide, but you're destroying someone's life. That's what happened to me at age eight years old. My, my, my family brought me into a uh, medium, Central. So it's, it's, it's Spanish Central, it's Demon Church. They brought me into a place that they took, they took my whole childhood away. When, when you open doors to the enemy, to Halloween, and you dress up your kids, and, and you, a lot of them, you know, Anton LaVey says something uh, to the Christian world. He said, I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their children to celebrate the devil's holiday one time a year. I mean, this is a, this is a person that was with the church of Satan. So why would you, you know, ch changing, putting a costume on your kid and celebrating, you're changing your kid's identity. Not only are you changing the kid's identity, you're allowing, you're allowing the enemy to come into his li this person's life. You're giving the devil legal rights over the, your kid's life. So later on, when your kid is 16, 17, and you wonder why he drift out of church, or he, his life is complicated, or, or there's things that are happening that you can't understand because we brought him up right, but you don't remember the night that you let him celebrate Halloween. And the devil knife is coming to collect. All right. The book is called Armed and Dangerous, The Ultimate Battle Plan, Plan for Targeting and Defeating the Enemy. It's available now wherever books are sold. John, thank, oh, man, God you. God thank you for thank your you testimony. So much.